Hi, I'm David Jones from the Manor from Devon Cooking School. Today we're going to be using the Morso Forno and we're going to be doing a few different things. We've got some aubergines, we're going to roast those and make a nice dip. We've got this fantastic piece of lamb, roast that with a little bit of rosemary and some seasoning. And we're going to make some pita breads. All of this is going to be done in the Morso Forno. You're going to see the oven being used in two or three different ways and it'll show you some of the versatility of the oven. For this dish, we're going to make our dough first. We're going to cook the bread last, but we're going to make the dough first. So in the bowl here, I've got white flour, and I'm adding to that a little bit of wholemeal, just to give it a bit more flavor, a bit more nuttiness. Then some salt and some yeast. Mix all of that up, and that's all of our dry ingredients. Yogurt's going to add a sort of creaminess to the dough and also give it a little bit more flexibility. And just some plain water. Don't like to waste that. I'm just going to keep a little bit back of that water just to, until I'm happy that we've got the right consistency. Simple bread scraper, mix that around, get everything nice and wet. And what we should get is a slightly sticky dough, which by the time we finish working it, will be nice and dry and easy to handle. Now I'm going to start kneading that on the, on the board here. Just rolling and folding the dough, putting some energy into it, helping the gluten to give the dough strength, elasticity, extensibility, and allow us to roll it out nice and thin to make our pita breads later. So five or six minutes of, of kneading, and I can feel the dough is becoming springy, nice and elastic. I can show you just how, how bouncy that is now. So that's our dough ready. We need to just put that somewhere reasonably warm, cover over the bowl and leave it for an hour or so. Whilst that's doing, we're going to get these beautiful plump aubergines, prick them all over. This is very important. We have had exploding aubergines in the oven before now. We've got this oval cast iron dish that'll work perfectly. Put those on there and it's going to go into the forno right up close to the fire. We're not bothered that the outside is going to burn, that's absolutely fine because we're going to peel away the burnt skin and only use the flesh and the flesh will have picked up some lovely smokiness from the flames. Whilst our aubergines are cooking there, we can get on and prepare our other ingredients. I'm going to start with this red onion and this just wants to be finely sliced. I concentrate on what I'm doing when I'm slicing like this. Yep. And we're going to chop up some tomatoes. These just need to be roughly chopped, they're going to cook down anyway. This job is made so much easier by having a really sharp knife. Your best friend in the kitchen is a very sharp knife. Okay. Those are all done and they smell fantastic. Next we need a little bit of garlic, roughly chopped or finely sliced. One or two cloves, you decide how much you like garlic. Any of these dishes with, with aubergine, sort of Middle East inspired dishes. In the Middle East, they, they probably have four cloves of garlic. Our aubergines have had about 10 minutes. They should be nicely burnt. It's not often you can say that I've successfully burnt something, but on this occasion, that is absolutely right. We're gonna put a pan in the oven so that we can start cooking the rest of the ingredients for this, for this dip. And just let that heat up for a couple of minutes tell you about what we're doing with the with the oven here. I've got a nice bed of embers at the back, some wood on top of that burning brightly, so the oven is, is really nice and hot at this stage. If it's cooking too quickly, I just bring it forward a little bit like that. If it's in need of a little more heat, I'll push it right up close to the fire. And that is how simple it is to kind of adjust the heat when we're cooking. The time for a little bit of olive oil to go in there. And that is really pretty hot. And that's ready for a handful of onion. And we'll just soften that for a minute before we add some more ingredients. You'll see I'm using a pan with a wooden handle here, which you might think is a little bit uh, crazy. But as long as I'm careful and I keep that handle away from the fire, it's really far enough away for it not to, not to scorch. That's had a minute or so. I'm just going to bring it out to there and add some garlic, a little garam masala, and about a half a teaspoon of cumin. Give that all a little stir. And then in go my tomatoes. Back into the oven for another blast of heat. 
Whilst the tomatoes are cooking, I'm going to pop in this other pan. We're going to warm that up and we're going to use that to cook this lamb. Whilst those tomatoes are happily sizzling away in the forno, I'm going to prepare these aubergines. You can see how soft they are, completely cooked through. So let's split those all open. And I'm going to take the flesh out of each one with a spoon. The flesh we're going to be using, the skin we want to leave behind. And I'm doing that carefully so we don't pick up any of the skin, or as little as possible. OK, our other pan should be warmed up by now. So I'm going to cook this little piece of lamb. Little olive oil, pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, just massage that in. In we go with a nice sizzle, a little bit of rosemary to perfume the lamb. Straight back in, no problem with having two dishes in the forno at once. The next thing we need to do, squeeze the excess water out of the aubergine. This will just intensify the flavour. We want lovely aubergine flesh. And just very roughly in the bowl, I'm going to chop that up. It's so soft, it chops really easily. OK, let's see how the tomato mixture is doing. It smells absolutely fantastic. We're going to mix that in, straight in there with the aubergine. So to that we need to add a nice pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. I'm going to take a lemon and we'll have some zest. Good squeeze of lemon juice. and some chopped coriander. Mix that up. Smells absolutely divine. I think our lamb should be ready by now. We'll take a look. That feels perfect. Here's the dough now. Beautifully risen. You can see how, how soft that's that's become. We'll just give that a quick kneading and divide it into six pieces. Then we're going to shape these into balls ready for rolling out. Okay we're ready with our first pitta, plenty of flour, flatten it down a bit, rolling up and down we want it to be around about three to four millimeters thick and nice and even. I'm going to add a few sesame seeds. I've got a mix of black and white sesame seeds here. They're just going to add a little bit of interest on the outside of the bread. And I'm going to put those in close to the fire where the floor will be nice and hot, but not too close because with pitters it's important that we, we don't crisp them up. We want them to stay nice and soft and supple. These are really best cooked and eaten within a few minutes if you can. There's our first one puffing up nicely. You'll have great fun doing this in your more so at home, watching pitters blow up in the oven and then bringing them out and serving them to your friends is just fantastic. Okay, so I think that's really demonstrated the versatility of the more so forno. We've baked breads on the floor of the oven, we've roasted the lamb, we've cooked the aubergines almost in the fire to give them a really smoky flavour, we've fried onions and tomatoes, all these different techniques which come together to create a lovely little feast and what a great spread to lay in front of your friends or family.